Hello and welcome to the FL Studio 9 beginner tutorials number one. I am Simon, also known as Dgod. And today we're going to talk about the graphical user interface of Fruity Loops, um, which can be pretty hard to understand when you're first learning uh, and first opening the program. This is for the total beginner. This is for you who have just got Fruity Loops um, or want to start with it but just can't handle all those buttons and gauges and the panels and windows and uh, all the other stuff that just gets thrown at you when you open the program the first time. And we're gonna go through all of these, um, the work areas, um, the things you use when you make music pretty much, just so we get an understanding of how it works and really the basics of how, use, how we use the program, all the tools and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, Fruit Loops is like throwing a guy into a cockpit of an airplane who has never flew a plane before and uh, pretty much just tell him not to fly this thing and no way he pr perhaps can take away but he will never be able to land that thing safely so uh, let's head into Fruit Loops and see what we got um, okay so okay see oh got a bathroom going on there um, can I st close this and then close this okay so the first thing I get to see when I open Fruit Loops um, by default is the playlist which is the area where we make the full songs but this is not what we're gonna start with actually I'm gonna close all these things I'm gonna hide this one here down here uh, for the time being and we're gonna focus on the area up here uh, where you have all the um, what is it, what's it called? Uh, toolbars and these are actually it looks more complex than drill is. Most of these are not even used while making the music at all. Uh, we got uh, the the shortcuts for uh, the different windows that we can use. Uh, for example, the one I hide down here. Uh, we have the playlist. We have the piano roll. Uh, we have the browser and the mixer. Uh, so that's just shortcuts, pretty much. Uh, <coughs> what you can use, you can either click view, and you can press those five here. That's the same as here or use the F5 to F9 keys uh, if you want to use shortcuts on keyboard. We got one with uh, shortcuts for undo, uh, save, record, uh, little good stuff here. Um, one thing that you notice w that when you have your mouse uh, cursor over one of these buttons here you will see in this area here exactly what it does. So you get a description of uh, what it is. Uh, we have a beat counter I think it's a beat counter. It doesn't follow seconds anyway. It's called a timer, but it's really a beat counter. Um, then we have the panel for recording stuff. Like, for example, in Fruity Loops, you can record live when you play on a keyboard or on your computer keyboard, so you can make uh, uh, music live, pretty much. Um, I never used this, so I won't go in further on what all these buttons do. I actually don't know exactly how it works. Uh, that's nothing I'm gonna go through yet at least, uh, perhaps in a later tutorial. I will check this up and go through it. Um, we have the news feed. I don't know exactly what no, this is. Online something it's called. Uh, I think it's uh, news from the Fruity Loops um, development team or something. I have no idea. We have um, the monitor which shows us the volume here. It's gonna be like boom 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 when the music goes up. Um, the waveform of the music. Really nothing you can do anything with. It's just for show. Uh, we have the CPU usage, same as here, but it shows how much of the CPU you're currently using when playing up a song in Fruit Loops. Um, we have the most important one, pretty much, is this one, where we have we can choose between the pattern or the song. Gonna tell you later what the differences are. Uh, we have the play button, the stop button, the record button. Uh, uh, the time uh, slide which uh, indicates where in the song or in the pattern we currently are so uh, for example if this one is here when we play a song it's in the middle of the song yeah pretty much like a standard uh, media player or whatever um, we have the beat BPM the beats per minute uh, this is how fast uh, the song progresses so if we put this like really high it's gonna be like doo -doo 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 -doo. and if we put it lower it's gonna be like a slower song but yeah uh, we ha also have the indicator for which pattern we currently uh, use or are in. Uh, then also we have a couple of here, like we can switch the volume of uh, the so the whole song, the whole sound output of Fruity Loops, and we can also pitch it if we like. 
I never touch this. It's really not that recommended to do. I've also got uh, these, but I, I won't go through this. I mean, it's file. You can start new projects, the standard thing, save, open. Uh, we got edit, you can cut, copy, pretty much like any other software. Mm. Uh, we have channels, this kind of stuff. We're going to go through this as well in later tutorials, not today. Because today we're going to focus on the workspace. The panels and windows that we have here, we use when we make our songs. We're going to start off by showing you the step sequencer, which I sh hidden down here. Now, step sequencer you can find here in the view, step sequencer F6, or up here on the second button. Um, this is where we have all our instruments, all our samples, our VSD plugins, our automation clips, everything that builds up the song will uh, end up here in the uh, step sequencer in some way. Um, for example here, the standard for me when I open the program is that there's four samples loaded. There's a kick drum, there's a clap, a hat, and a snare. Uh, what you can do with this, uh, the first time you open Fruity Loops, this is pretty much I think what everyone does. They find these four and they like just put some dots in here and okay. And then they press play and they go like Oh yeah. I'm making music now. Um, this is pretty much what everyone can do when they start this program, but then it immediately takes off to another level when you s have to try to add new instruments and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go through that as well in later tutorials. Um, I'm gonna check the other one out. That's the playlist. It's actually this one here above the step sequencer or this button here or the F5 key if you like. Um, here we have all the patterns of the song. This is where we make the song as a whole is in the playlist where we put all our drum patterns and synth patterns and bass patterns together and make a song out of it. Um, for example, if I change the name of this pattern here to uh, kick and then I put four kick drums in here. Okay. Now I have a pattern that I have called kick which has four kick drums in it. These four. This is what is going to be played by this pattern. So if I go up here to the player and I choose pattern and I press play, it's going to play the pattern which is inside this one. If I go to pattern 2, it's empty. There's nothing here. Nothing will play when I press play here, up here. Because this pattern is empty. But this pattern is filled, so let's try pressing play. Because my kick drops going on there. And you can place out this pattern. For example, if you go to pattern uh, kick here and we place out these blocks. Now if I go to song, it will play these four kick drums from this pattern. For example, if I place an empty pattern, it won't play anything because it's empty. So, you can also show like this. If I place them like that, it's gonna play four bass drums, then it's gonna be silent, and then four more, because this is the song as a whole. Um, that's the playlist pretty much. You can also use the area up here, if we take down here. This area can be used. Um, just make sure you select the right pattern, for example the pattern one. This area can be used to place out these things as well, the patterns. It's pretty much the same thing as down here, uh, but it's much easier to use down here when a beginner. I sometimes use, when I make music, I use this area as well, but not that much. Mostly keep down here. That's what I recommend you to do. Um, we're also going to show you uh, the other stuff that we're going to close this down. So we go into view and we check the piano roll. Okay, so this is this is really where where everything happens, pretty much. Um, where it's the fun parts happen. Where you make your bass lines. Where you make your arps. Where you make your synths. Where you make your music, pretty much. Um, for example, here you can do this with bass drums as well, but it's not really that fun because. Who wants to pitch bass drums? The bass drum is the bass drum. It should be not. Uh, it should not be altered by putting it higher up. Like for example, if I put the bass drum up here, it's gonna sound like a midget drum or something. Yeah. So um, that's the piano roll, pretty much. I'm not gonna go through all of these tools. I will take that in later tutorials as well. This is just to make you understand uh, really what um, the basics. The, re the really the basics. Just get a feel for the different windows that we have. Um, 
The piano roll can also be used like this. You can right click if you have filled four kick drums as I have done here for example or whatever. You can right click the kick and you can send to piano roll. And then the same pattern will appear here as uh, uh, call it? as a pattern in the piano roll. And also this will change because the piano roll alters this so it's not these dots anymore because you have exchanged these dots. They have been transferred to the piano roll and created a pattern in the piano roll form so to say that appears in the pattern here. So it's the same thing if I play this uh, as a pattern then you can see that it plays the same. You can also say play in, pl well, play in the piano roll. Um, yeah, so that's the piano roll. Um, going in here to the browser. Uh, it's gonna close this down first. Stop the music. <sighs> this is the browser. Also, here we have um, the packs. I mean, we have some default sounds that follows with Fruity Loops. We can open the packs. We have some drum. Excuse me. We have some drum kits here. Um, various drums. Um, nothing fancy really. I highly recommend you to get default um, drums. Uh, I'm gonna p probably post a link down in the description of the video to where you can get some really nice sounding uh, techno, hard style, house, uh, club uh, drums, uh, that kind of stuff that that you can use. Also, a lot of nice stuff comes with the packages as well as basses and that kind of stuff. So, really awesome. Uh, check that out when I, uh, check those links out <coughs> after you watch this tutorial. Um, the browser. I mean, I I don't use this that much. You have the projects. This is really cool to check out uh, when you're new. The cool stuff in the projects because this is songs that has been made in Fruity Loops that are shipped with Fruity Loops, where you can see uh, songs that other people have made. It's just right clicking on one and press open then you will open the song and you can press song here and press play and you can see what uh, you can do with Fruity Loops, it's awesome some really good stuff there um, that's pretty much what I will go through in the browser you have speech, I never used this once but that's pretty cool as well some robo things and other stuff uh, yeah that's the browser pretty much you can also, you also your projects that you open or that you save, uh, more likely, uh, will be shown here in the project folders. If you want to browse your projects in a good way, you can just go in here and here is all my songs I've saved. Uh, for example. Uh, and we also got the last one, the mixer. I won't even go, I mean, I won't go through all of this, but here's pretty much where you uh, can mix together sounds and master them as you like. For example, if we take... Uh, I'm just gonna play the place, need to sh choose that. Uh, make another uh, kick... S here, a kick pattern. Uh, I can assign this to one of the mixer tracks and then what this does is that mm, now the kick drum is assigned to mixer track 3 because that's the one I've chosen up here but this I will go through later in more detail as well how to do. I just want to show you what the mixer does pretty much. What the mixer does is that the kick drum is now channeled through this channel before it is going into the master. So if I press play now, we can see that the bass drum is sounding here. And it actually goes through this channel before it is uh, um, put out in the master channel, which is the sound we hear. So for example, if I press this arrow here down here, then the kick drum will sound in this channel. You can hear it in this channel, but since it doesn't go to the master, it doesn't. You can't hear it. So I'm gonna re-get it into the master. And here you also have like a lot of filters and stuff. You can make the bass drum sound different. For example, we can add a a dist to it if you want. Uh, a lot of stuff can be done here for making the song more advanced. Songs will be. Uh, uh, you need to use the mixer. It's a really important tool. But it's gonna be in a later tutorial, pretty much later I guess, because there's a lot of basics to go through before you use this. That's pretty much what it does, so that's all of the basics of um, the Windows and work areas in Fruity Loops. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something.